So Andy and I were here talking about engineering and he brought up something fascinating that I wanted him to share. So most physically realizable systems have a resonant or natural frequency, such as when you swing in a child in, in a um, swing set, there's a rhythm frequency that you can't go past or if you go too slow you get hit in the head or if you go too fast you'll fall down. So there's that natural frequency which you will find doing those things. And so that's considered a, um, a system that is critically damped. It's, it's exactly where it ought to be. There are physical systems uh, that really, real physical systems cannot support uh, an infinite amount of input without some consequence. For example, there's a bridge, famous bridge uh, in C uh, the Washington area, the C uh, Seattle Tacoma Narrows Bridge, I believe it's called, that <clears throat> there's, a, there's actually archival move. Uh, movie footage of this bridge. As you look down, you see the bridge, all of a sudden the roadway starts to twist and turn. And it, it tr as you look at it, it's twisting left to right and then it goes up and down like that. So it has those axes of freedom as it's moving because the wind is coming in at the right, freak the right speed from the right direction to constantly push pumping energy into the bridge. So like when you're pushing the kid, you are putting energy into the kid in the swing. But you're sort of a limited factor and the swing set's got a lot of friction, slow it down, blah, blah. with the wind, it's not stopping. So eventually this bridge just shatters. And there's a movie footage of the whole thing. The only living being that uh, died, obviously, oddly enough, was a dog. But uh, it's pretty dramatic. So one of the cosmic lessons is that real systems have natural uh, limits about how much they can, inputs they can take of energy and what they will do with too much energy input. He said something about negative feedback. Okay, so negative, one of those curious things uh, back in the 1910s, 1920s, uh, AT&T, which was developing telephone systems, which would hopefully go from coast to coast, had a real problem that they wanted to make it so that the signals would go across long distances, be heard, and that you could have some idea of what was being said. If you ever, uh, you can go to an anoic chamber, a chamber that does not have any reverberation, and you, it, you're talking into a vacuum in a sense because you have no feedback to your ears about how loud you're talking. So, what uh, Henry Blackman, uh, he was an engineer riding the subway one day, and it came with the idea of putting negative feedback into the uh, amplifier of the system that's of interest. So there would be, here's a system that you're doing stuff. You put an input, like your phone message goes into this amplifier and spits out an output. He would take some of the output, put it through, he would invert the value of it, make it negative, a small amount, and add it into the input. And that negative feedback made the whole system much more stable. So that's one of those cosmic things that negative feedback, which would seem like you're wasting output energy, actually turns out to make the whole system more stable. So it's one of those great metaphorical lessons that sometimes you have to give up something in order to gain a lot more. And then what does that have to do with the bridge? Uh, the bridge is that there was no negative feedback. <laughs> it was just all positive feedback. Remember, no natural, no real system can sustain infinite amounts of feedback, positive feedback forever. And so all the input to that bridge was positive. Uh, there's no feedback as a matter of fact, it's just positive input. So all, if this is the bridge system doing this, so the wind is the input to that system, and it's by hitting the, the guy wires, et cetera, it translates that into the motion. So there is no negative feedback, nothing to dampen the uh, oscillations on the bridge in any dimension. Okay. This is also one of the reasons that soldiers march across bridges out of pace. So if you're a soldier, you're taught to move left, right, left, or actually left, right, left, right, and in unison. But if you get to a bridge, and the bridge is made of something like wood, and they're all hitting the ground at the same time, this is a major input function to the bridge. And that amount of energy often destroys them. So they learn this the hard way. So what they do now when they get to bridges like that, they fall out of step and they wander around like tourists. Got it. All right, thank you so yep. much. You want to introduce yourself? Or who uh, you I'm Andy Qualls. Uh, I've known Nevin Jenkins for a few days. Uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever. A few years. Go ahead. Go um, so we're at a camp out at Turkey Run State Park with friends and families type stuff. And 
I have, uh, I wound up being an engineer in my life. I was first going to go to college, I uh, was going to become a lawyer, so I majored in philosophy. So I wound up being an electrical engineer as well. So, life is And you didn't end up going to engineering school until how old? I was 35 when I started engineering school. Okay. And I got a master's when I was 57. All right. Wow. In, a master's in electrical and computer engineering when I was 57. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome.